The skyline of London is changing as the capital is developed more densely in order to meet the demands of the growth in population. The result of this densification in some areas is taller buildings. Research carried out by New London Architecture in 2015 showed that some 263 new towers over 20 storeys high were under construction or planned for the London area. The scale of change came as a surprise to many, but as a Mori poll at the time showed, wasn't wholly unpopular. Tall buildings were constructed in the 1960s and 70s, a few office buildings in the city and West End, and many towers of public housing dotted randomly across the capital. The current wave began in the 1980s, first in Canary Wharf with large towers to meet the needs of the finance industry after the deregulation of the banks in 1985, and then in the City of London, which was keen to compete with Canary Wharf and was forced by lack of space to go up rather than out. The new towers are planned in clusters rather than as individual landmarks. The iconic Eastern City cluster is located around Lettenhall in order to avoid the view corridors of St Paul's Cathedral. The Mayor's view management framework is designed to stop towers being built that will block views of St Paul's Cathedral and the Palace of Westminster from key distant vantage points like here at Primrose Hill. Over the next decade, areas like Nine Elms and Vauxhall, Southwark, City Road, Stratford and Canary Wharf will change significantly with towers rising to 60 or so storeys. It's very important that tall buildings are of the highest architectural quality, both in their profile on the skyline and in the way they hit the ground. In order that the general public and the policy makers can better understand the consequences of building tall, the NLA has proposed that the Mayor should commission a 3D virtual computer model of the whole of central London into which development proposals can be inserted and their impact studied.